Tottenham 3, West Ham 3. I've just run upstairs to record this video because I want to get this because the emotions are running wild. David Moyes makes some substitutions. He brings on the right men. Antonio was very quiet in the game. Yarmolenko and Kufal link up. Lanzini scores an absolute screamer. We have come back from 3-0 down against Tottenham and spoilt the Bell party, especially five minutes before or a couple minutes before he went and missed that one-on-one -on -one against Fabianski. We've gone up the other end. We've won a free kick and we've absolutely stuck it in the top bins. What a result. And I want to break this down because, of course, we could just talk about the Lanzini goal all, all day long. Let's start off with the starting lineup. Same teams that beat Wolves and Leicester. Yes, OK. And I don't think we can blame David Moyes for the first half performance because it's the same team that everyone would have played. We beat two top eight teams, two top six teams, right, very comfortably. You can't, you, can't, you know, then have a go at the manager. So for me, the game was lost in the first 15 minutes because of mistakes. Um, Balbuena lets a fantastic ball, by the way, and Kane dropping deeper and playing those balls in behind, right, was he's going to be an absolute menace for opposition teams, especially as he's trying to play a different role. I feel like he's maybe going to try and play a similar role as to what Firmino does for Liverpool and how Salah and Mane link up. However, he drops deep. He plays a fantastic through ball to Son. Now, Son, whilst he's a very quality, a very, very good player and one of the most, he's one of the best wingers in this league, right? He... Yeah, loves his signature move. He's cut inside on that right foot. Whip it in. What does he do? Balbuena, instead of showing him the outside, he actually shows him and come, in, come inside. Ogbon is trying to come across. However, he reacts a little bit too late and Son whips it in for 1-0. The second goal, this all happened. It was like bomb, bomb, bomb. I feel like, you know, the confidence got sucked out because the first 16, literally the first 30 seconds, we had a shot with Sukek. We play a kickoff up to, the, up to Sukek. Ball comes. Sukek hits it off. Hits a shot off. The second goal, Kane. What does he do? And I think, you know, players such as, well, strikers such as Harry Kane, strikers such as Jermaine Defoe, they love the snapshots, right? Harry Kane nutmegs Declan Rice, okay? And then whilst everyone else is probably thinking, you know what, he's going to play it out wide, he's hit a snapshot. Goes through Ogbonna's leg, legs. Fabianski is blindsided by the defenders and it goes into the corner. Now, the third goal, okay? And you've got to admit, guys, yes, whilst, you know, we have come off the back of two very good victories against Wolves and Leicester, we are still like, you know, we're a very inconsistent team. We are going to get beat by teams. But you've got to admit, right, you have to admit that since David Moyes has come into this club, okay, he has instilled an attitude that we haven't seen at West Ham for a while. If that was Pellegrini... Ask yourselves, guys, if Pellegrini was in charge and we're losing 3-0, are we coming back in that game? The amount of times we lost 3-4, whilst we have lost by those scorelines before, right, under David Moyes, that's that's not, you know, that hasn't gone away. We have lost by those scorelines before under David Moyes. However, we actually do try, right, to try and get back in the game. And I know the first half performance wasn't great and it could only get better in the second half and only could go to another level. You have to admit, guys, and you have to, you know, when you evaluate it, right, that since Moyes has come in, we when we do go down, right, even if it is 2-0, we do look like that we could come back sometimes. They do work hard for each other. And I feel like, you know, the threat of, you know, the threat of Antonio was nullified by Tottenham today. Tottenham, and you might hear my voice, yeah, I've, I've played Sunday League, my voice as well, you know, after that absolute screamer by Lanzini. I can hardly talk, but we're getting this video out. What a result. But you have to admit, David Moyes has instilled a very good attitude that work hard for each other. And that is what he's trying to build at West Ham. Despite us losing, well, losing 3-0 at halftime, a cross by Rugillion and a back stick. Kane drifts off his marker from Ogbonna to Cresswell obviously because he's the smaller guy, heads it in for 3-0. And whilst we are losing 3-0, I'm, sa I'm saying we are going to lose games. Do not change the way we're playing. Like, if we lost 3-0, I don't want to see us go to a back four next week against Man City or start changing the formation because we've had one bad result. This formation is working for us at the moment. It's half-time, right? No substitutions are made. 20 minutes into, well, going into the, in, into the first, into the second half, four nails. Antonio has a shot that's deflected 
The ball comes to four nails and he heads it over the bar. And at three two, we're all thinking four nails, you know, may rue that may miss rue, you know, may rue that missing that chance. And we started to create a little bit more. Whilst yes, the second as I said, the second half performance couldn't get any worse because of the first half, we did up it a gear. Whilst maybe Spurs did contribute into that into contribute with that, because you know, they they thought they won the game. Let off the gas. It's a Jose Mourinho team. They could sit behind the ball 3 0 and soak up the pressure. However, this is a team that apparently haven't kept a clean sheet in a long while. We have a, I can't remember if it was from a free kick or from an actual um, cross. Anyway, a ball gets swung in. And there is Balbuena, who heads it into the corner. And this is in what, in the 81st minute? 81st minute? You know what this has given me, guys, right? This has given me um, West Ham Everton vibes. Do you remember when we was 2-0 down with 10 minutes to remaining at Goodison Park? Lukaku missed a penalty as well, and we go and win 3-2 when Payet um, scored a last-minute winner. It's given me those vibes because we scored three goals in literally the last 10 minutes of the game. Obviously, Moyes made a couple of substitutions, Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko links up with Kufal. Fantastic ac across, and Davison Sanchez felt that he had to deal with it. He felt he had to deal with it. He's dived at the ball, head out. When you're diving to head the ball, let's be honest, it's one of those that could go anywhere. It can go straight, it can go right. However, from our point of view, from West Ham, it went our way. He's headed it in the bottom corner. And we're all thinking, you know, including adding on time, there's about six or seven minutes here. Could we actually nick it? Can we nick it? Bowen has a good chance. Uh, spins, has a shot blocked. Now, Spurs turn it into a transition. They're attacking us. Bow is one and one. Well, he's more like running at Ogbonna. He does sort of a shimmy, knocks the ball from his right to his left. He's through one of one. Fantastic work rate by Yarmolenko, by the way. Considering we were just attacking, our right winger, right, is the one that's you know trying to put off, put off Bow. He might have done, just done it, just done enough because Bow's had a shot. He's fallen over, and if it wasn't that pressure from Yarmolenko, the work rate that I was just talking about that David Moyes is trying to drum into this West Ham team. And as I said, since David Moyes has come in, our stats, uh, you know, our stats regarding how far we travel has gone flying out, flying up. Okay, and you you see it in some of the training videos, yeah, during the week. They're, they're running. They're, they're doing laps. They're running. They've got whistles. Stuart Pearce had a whistle. They're running. He's getting them working hard because at the end of the day, David Moyes has got a sort of philosophy at West Ham. doesn't matter how good you are, right? If you do not run for the team, if you do not work hard, you will not get a say in the team. And that is one thing you've got to say. Well done, David Moyes. He sort of, you know, we can see that this team is developing into a David Moyes team. Trying not to give up, but at least put the work in. Because if you put the work in, you can never know what happens. Last minute of the game, pretty much, or two minutes before the end. We have a corner. No, a free kick with Cresswell. I'm begging it. I'm begging for Snodgrass to, to take it. He's literally just been brought on two minutes prior to probably take set pieces because we're probably playing for set pieces. No Antonio on the pitch, who was nullified by Tottenham today, you must admit. You know, with when the threat of Antonio was nullified, we didn't really have any other option. We didn't have a plan B. Antonio's the main threat. Try and get, get the ball into him. He will spin off, drag the centre-backs out into wide positions, positions they are not comfortable with. However, got to admit, Toby Alderweire and Davison Sanchez done a very good job on Antonio today because Antonio was very quiet. And probably in the 75th minute, David Moyes thought, you know what, we'll take him off because we've probably lost the game. So he's probably saving his legs, thinking about the result and, of course, upcoming fixtures. Now, Snodgrass doesn't take the set piece. Cresswell takes the set piece, right? He whips the ball in, okay? The ball comes out to Snodgrass and Snodgrass just being on a little bit, being, you know, a little bit behind play, a little bit, you know, not so much, you know, not concentrating. The, up, the Tottenham defender or the Tottenham midfield, whoever it was that nips the ball was a little bit, you know, just his alertness was a little bit higher. But thank God he did nip that ball because he nipped the ball and his heavy touch went in the way of Manuel Lanzini. And by the way, I said during the game because he picked the ball up, he, he, he held onto the ball a couple of times where maybe he shouldn't have done, right? Whilst he got one a free kick, he could have played it a little bit quicker. However, the ball's come to him and he's absolutely roofed it into the top bins. 
Lloris gets a gets a fingertip to it. It's hit the absolute stanchion. It's hit the underside of the crossbar, and it's gone in. And uh, me and my dad, we're we're going mental, as I can imagine every West Ham fan watching at home, watching on West Ham fan TV stream or any kind of stream. Right, we are going absolutely mental, and that goal is better probably because of. You know, we did draw that game. We remember Ob Obiang's goal when he smashes it top, gin top bins against at Wembley, right? Top bins at Wembley. We go on to draw that game 1 1 because of the situation that we're in, right? Both are fantastic strikes because of the situation we were in. 3 0 down with 10 minutes or 11 minutes remaining, and we have come back to nick a draw, right? What a goal. Lanzini's goal was better. Guys, make sure in the comment section you, right, let me know what goal was better, Obiang or Lanzini, right? Lanzini's goal, he slices across it. And that is probably the reason why it goes in. If he hits that straight, if he hits that with his laces and it goes straight, maybe Lloris has more chance. However, because he's hit across it with his, you know, with the outside of his boat, it's drifting away from Lloris and it goes into the top corner. But my God, 3-0 down with 11 minutes remaining, you know, in the 17th minute when we're 3-0 down, the game felt like it was in the 80th minute. You know when sometimes you've, you look, you know you, you've lost. You know you've lost. You're in the 80th minute. You just sort of go through the motions. That's what it felt like in the 17th minute, right? We picked up the pace second half, right? We had a couple of chances, didn't take them. And we have gone and picked up a point at Tottenham. And it makes it all so much sweeter that Gareth Bell could have made it 4-2 about two minutes before. What a result. So, oh, seven points out of the first five games. And considering the fixtures we have had, right? I had in my prediction, West Ham prediction video, I put us down to have two points, okay? Out of the first seven games or eight games, whatever it was. But we've got seven. And guys, I've, I've saw, you know, you've got to admit at the moment, David Moyes, with the resources that he's got, he's doing, in my opinion, one hell of a job. Seven points out of the first, you know, five, uh, four or five games, whatever it is, five games. What a job that, in my opinion, he's doing right now with the resources he's got. He's getting the team working hard for each other, trying to get a you know a belief that if there if if you are losing one or two nil, that you can get back in the game through hard work. The hard work in the second half, us winning more first balls, winning second balls, okay, pays off. Tottenham free, West Ham free. We get another point. Things you love to see. That's my weekend, mate. Guys, if you're new around here, you love West Ham content, make sure you drop a video, a like. And also, if you love West Ham content, we're close to 1.3K subscribers on this West Ham YouTube channel. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. My weekend's been made, and I'll catch you next time.